Sue Minahan. Welcome to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests bring you insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for soul growth. Come journey with us through astrology's energetic cycles and get ready to understand your path in the cosmic roots of the stars. Hello, I'm Sue Rose Minahan, host of Talk Cosmos, Insightful Conversations, Awakened Soul Girls. And today is March 24th, 2024. And I have to remember those because we're having a guest today whose birthday is today, and we'll do a little celebratory about that. And we're celebrating really this eclipse that is tomorrow on the 25th. Eclipses are really always for me a a work in progress. We can project and project and think and analyze and look at it, but it's the experience. It's truly a resetting, a rebirth. And every process like that is not just a one stage fact. Any play usually is a three act play. They have one act plays. And anyway, such is life, right? And we thank you so much. We'll be right here. And because we're going to start off with, we're ready for Kaleidoscope Visions. Associating current astrology transits to a real life natal chart transit reading through the understanding of the sky's cosmic consciousness for navigating free will options. This is your Kaleidoscope Visions panel. I am Sue Rose Minahan founder of Top Cosmos since 2018, an evolutionary astrologer and student of vibrational astrology, a consultant, workshop facilitator, lecture speaker, writer, Dwarf Planet University graduate, charter member of Kepler Astrology Toastmaster Club, hold an AA degree and Associate of Fine Arts Music degree and Certificate of Fine Arts and Jazz. I'm an artist, musician, mythologist, and pursue esoteric philosophies. I'm Amanda Pierce. I'm a soul-centered astrologer, blending intuition into my practice. I believe the universe is always working for our highest good and seek to empower my clients in our readings. I teach a four-week series of empowerment-based meditation classes that connect you deeper into your own intuition and innate power. I work in communications with a passion for employee experience. I also have a BA in psychology. I'm passionate about healing and enjoy helping others create new realities and shift old paradigms. And I am John Chenworth, an astrologer from Seattle, Washington. I grew up in Southern Arizona and was so obsessed with mythology that I concretely imprinted the Greco-Roman pantheon into my psyche. I still see those gods and goddesses infused into everything around me. My experiences of working with developmentally disabled and resource students for many years as both teacher and mentor has given me a strong compassion for others and has seasoned me with an exceptional reconciling energy. I have more than 18 years experience reading natal charts and continue to enhance consulting techniques by attending workshops and conferences. I use a unique blend of evolutionary, archetypal, and traditional astrological methods to look for themes in the birth chart for us to explore. I also enjoy penning poems and exploring Washington State on road trips. And like the Sufi poet Rumi says, You are the entire ocean in a drop. Hello, hi, Amanda and John. Hello. So it's, it's spring. Yes, it spring is. has... <laughs> have we sprung? I don't know. So, so <laughs> I think we're getting I, there. We're getting there with this eclipse, right? Oh, my goodness. I feel like we, it. We really have. It's just incredible. Um, With that said, anything in particular? Or am I the only one kind of cracking open at the seams? No, it's definitely like the energies are are feeling intense right now. And I'm noticing it with everyone around me. I'm noticing it too. People are a little more outgoing and a little more bubbly, I guess. Well, that's encouraging. It is a rebirth. It is. It's it's always when you look at things. Let's look at the chart. Let's see what's happening. Okay. We have Amanda Pierce, and you can reach Amanda at Amanda Moon Astrology at Gmail. And we have John Chinworth, and his website is skypathastro.com. Eclipses. They represent this entire idea of rebooting 
I often think of it somewhat, would you say, like a the theatrical show? The curtains are closed. We're all sitting there and and the lights go out and then boom, there goes the show. Yes, the the theater, perhaps. So we're um, building and trying to, but it's also a matter of, of releasing. And I think this chart is encouraging that through Sometimes it's not easy to release things. But yet, if one sees the objective ahead or else, it's just an encouraging something else is there it, or a new perspective. Mm -hmm. Amanda. Yeah. Well, when I think of eclipses, I think, um, I think of them as getting us back on track on our path. And if we're, if we're already on our path, that's great. It just speeds us up a little bit. And it, it just there's extra momentum there. And if we're not on our path, it's going to try and correct it. And sometimes that's where things can feel a little chaotic because there may be a shift of energy and that may show up big in your life. Maybe not. I think of uh, the, like solar eclipses as being a teacher kind of mode where you come to teach and lunar eclipses is where we come to learn. We're like students. So as a lunar eclipse, it's like, what are we needing to learn right now? What needs to open up and what kind of knowledge do we need to take in? And it might be coming in rather rapidly because Libra Aries. So <laughs> I, I really uh, like that too, because lunar eclipses are always full moon eclipses. So things become very apparent, you know, it's like, it's yeah. all lit up. And you really feel it because of that full moon presence. I'm so glad you're both on this team because <laughs> you really cover. I'm a student right here. I wasn't thinking that, yes, of course, it just resets us in that case. I always think, oh, my gosh, new changes. But that's positive. So you covered a couple of these points. I was just looking at one of my little um, sky glyphs, you know, you can look at the sky, everybody. There's these wonderful glyphs, not glyphs, but they're apps. That's word is apps. Like for instance, sky view is a great one. And they come up with information. And one is that there can be seven eclipses in a year, possibly, but they're generally a pair solar and lunar. Doesn't matter which is which in a year can one can be first or the other. And then six months later, there's another pair. And they do attach themselves within, for the, well, attached, pardon my language. But a lunar needs to be about 18 degrees from the nodes. And that's when the sun's and the moon's path meet. See, this is just a little diagram. And that means uh, join or connection, a knot, you know, a, a node. It's like a crossing. Yes. Right. Thank you. Like yes, uh, yes. we're talking about, like we're in new territory, right? So we pass when, we're, when the node happens, we're crossing a new territory, and mm. that's what's happening in space, sort of. Yeah. Here, when it's descending, it's actually going to the south node, and ascending, it's going up to the north mm -hmm. node, and and then this is another diagram. I won't go into it, but I thought it's for those people that love to know how we're in motion, because not only are we spinning around Earth and the moon around us with all these, but we're going through the Milky Way and we're heading north. The time zones, this is from Sydney all the way to Hawaii. And for, on March 25th in London or Greenwich, it's gonna be in the morning at seven o'clock with six seconds afterwards. On the West Coast where both of you are, and I think our guest, it's gonna be in the morning also, three o'clock and here, no, pardon me, that's gonna be at almost midnight. That's right, it's gonna be three o'clock in the east. Here's our chart. It is March 25th, this is news in Greenwich or London and at 7 a.m. We were talking about how it's a, like a bucket shape, how yes. the moon is out by itself standing alone. It is emotional. You know, we're, or if it's not emotional, we're talking about our stories, I think, because mm -hmm. the moon represents our stories. We can always and change our stories we, you know, with a new... Any moon left out in a hemisphere by itself, I, I always think of it being very vulnerable, and it being the moon, that's going to might add a little bit more vulnerability to it. It's out there in Libra trying to balance it all out, facing all the other planets like 
what's coming at me. Just yeah. Of, that kind of feel to this chart, right? Yeah. It's a, anytime you have the, a bucket chart, the handle is always the focus of the chart. And so that moon and Libra, it's, it's where we're looking really to, um, kind of tell us about these energies and you can really feel it. It's, it's been, um, it's been an emotional lead up to, to this eclipse. The planets themselves are in pairs. That's the other feature of this is they that are. <laughs> yeah, all the way and they're close, you know, it's, it's they they would be called what we call in a, um, not a bucket. I'm trying to think of not a fan. This is like a fan. A um, Anyway, very intense. It's, it's from, Pisces just to Taurus, but you have Venus and Saturn giving some kind of wisdom and maturity to what your desires are. And then the sun with Neptune, that's clearly having visions and thinking, you know, the beyond the, the ordinary. And then we have Mercury with, but mostly Chiron in the North Node, this healing energetic, contemplative, action-oriented. It's an Aries. It's identity. It's like, let. how can we move to become who we want in a more whole self? Yeah. The other, yeah. And then we have Jupiter, the expansion with uh, original, immediate-based, sudden Uranus. A lot of the planets are in the universal houses, uh, the, which the upper left side of the chart is uh, well tenanted with planets. So uh, uh, getting beyond the self or a, a transpersonal kind of feel, maybe a little bit. And interestingly, with that said, there is this yod. There's two two particular, uh, yeah, right, aspects that just take some real, well, that's what we're working on. One is a yod to the south node. But they involve all those outer planets, well, along with Venus. So all, they're maybe we're we're adjusting or thinking how to make these big expansive ideas and and using our uh, maturity to figure out what our values are and self worth. But it's still how do we what do we release? How do we adjust that? What would you guys say about the South Node? In, of course, it wants to speak to Libra. So Libra is really powerful here. Well, we I mean, the nodes are in North Node in Aries, South Node in Libra. So this has got, the, we're, we're looking at relationship dynamics here. And um, I, I guess the, I guess I'll, I'll touch on the South point, but at first I want to mention the, the Sun and Neptune relationship. And this is a, a new cycle for the sun and Neptune together. The sun was just conjunct with Neptune. And so it went through this kind of like spiritualizing process or, or going very like yin and internal. And sometimes that, that meant we may have felt um, confused or just like things were a little bit foggy, but it's coming out of that now in, in Aries and it's bursting out. And it has this sense of, oh, I know what I want to do now and what I want. And that's a that's a opposite of the moon in Libra, which is really all about, you know, like let's let's make sure everybody's good and I gotta think about everybody else. But then there's all of this other Aries energy, that North Node in Aries and that Chiron in Aries and Mercury and just wanting to like do your own thing and heal it, heal by going your own way. And um but how do we balance it? I love that, John, you said that right off the bat. Like, how do we balance this? Because that that moon is so prominent and that, um, that Libra energy. And so we have to find a way to, to work with both of those and not get too caught up in the, the brashness of that Aries energy. And Mars is by itself. I mean, there are some at, other with asteroids and, and whatnot, but generally... It's independent. It's like going, it doesn't have, it's a singleton in a sense. You know, and so it's it an Aquarius, which is like being in the crowd, but it's being by itself in the crowd. No, it's in Pisces. You know what I mean? 
I think is it in Pi I think it's in yeah, Pisces. Yeah, Pisces. Right, it is in Pisces. Never mind. Well, I think That's of that okay. as having. I think of that as having um, uh, like a, a sword fighter underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the fish. I mean, maybe There's, I think I'm really slow. I love I, fish. I'd yeah, like you, to take action, but I, the, the pressure, I, I can't do it. You know there's, I mean? Yeah, and there you like you have to kind of think out, outside the box and how are you right. going to take action? Because it's not going to be that straightforward because of that. We've got that strong Libra presence with that moon and that south node. and um, so Maybe a lot of internal action, like what am I spiritually feeling now? It's like being a spiritual warrior in a way. That's kind of interesting with this chart. Yeah. And particularly because Ceres, the mother of Persephone and Demetra in, in Roman, or, or it's one's actually Greek and Ceres is Roman. Yeah. And she is squaring. In other words, she is looking at both sides for action of these nodes of where South Node, which is very familiar, our relationships. We you know that's where we... Re, this is the collective notes here where we're uh, it's familiar we're, we have routine uh, relationships and then that how are we stepping out into that new identity that's going to be healing and 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 all the actions and where do we find nurturing that's the because Ceres was grief stricken losing her daughter and of course that represents the whole idea of agriculture that it, it's a cycle that death and rebirth and yet she also taught a child agriculture how to sustain themselves with food who taught humanity and so it's this where do we nurture ourselves i think that grief piece that you you just spoke about like series is wherever you find series in the chart you know there's an aspect of loss that's happened mm. And so it's swearing the notes here it, it, that kind of in, just intensifies the, the energies with this. It's like, where have I, am I going to lose myself if I, if I prioritize the other, you know, it's squaring that North node. Yeah, in Aries. If I join the other, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. Am I, am I giving up on myself in any way? Am I losing myself? Or um, is it a new venture? Is it something that's really going to aid my growth? I'm right. yeah. li literally being lost. So I'm se stepping out into this new adventure and where's this path going to go? I don't know. And I'm used to as an agricultural mm -hmm. goddess. I like my fields. I like things growing on time. Right. Like what new regimens are coming in that I have to master that yeah. is going to mess up my world a little bit. So it's, it's new territory. Everything I like in this chart speaks to that. And it's kind of, it's just rocky feeling. You yeah. Know? yeah. I, I thank you both so much. And Amanda, I, I totally approve i mean i i resonate with everything you're saying and that's why i jumped in because there is i know i've had a couple of new opportunities perhaps and that i hadn't realized but that really is my thought is well let's move on and well and one can i say one last thing just yes. that the moon is in libra and so its ruler is venus and i think both of you spoke about this about like needing that maturity because venus is conjunct saturn and so saturn like you have to behave maturely and so here we are like at this crossroads and and moving into new things and how do we kind of balance these different things with that maturity Good. Mm -hmm. And I will bring up that little funny thing that looks over there in the sixth house, which is one degree Scorpio, is Hamea, the goddess of rebirth. And she's just now really staying in Scorpio and is Tron, um, square Pluto, which we know is, which is now going to stay in Aquarius. So it's a long standing as rebirth process, a really strong rebirth so i really how may wanting to maintain as a as a creative goddess and pluto wanting to destroy what a what a battle <laughs> what are we hanging on to what, what do we need to let go of create and destroy yes <laughs> i love Amanda. i love pluto here though because it's trining that moon and it's sextiling the sun and so it does provide us with this mm -hmm. avenue for us to step into our power to to really allow these energies to flow and it, it being an Aquarius, Aquarius is so good at 
kind of taking a step back and seeing the bigger picture and kind of getting an overview and not getting wrapped up in the emotions of things. So I think that's a, an area of where we can look to for guidance. Okay. John, I know you speak of the Sabian symbols. They are spiritual essences for every astrological degree. And so it's always the rounded off to the next number. So the one we're going to focus on, because we have so much happening here, would be the five, with the actual Libra moon, which will be six Libra. Um, do you want to carry it? Or shall I read part? Well, of it? sure. When it, the, uh, well, you know, the picture is a man watches his ideals take concrete form before him. So he's thinking of something and it materializes. And I think of attainment and achievement and endeavor. And because it's a uh, full moon, it's really good to look at the sun. Because And this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a weird picture. A square appears with one of its sides brightly lit. So proportions sequencing patterns it really is a builder kind of eclipse oh. on both sides oh boy he yeah, be i it's like this. both sides actually take a rock from the, here on, and put it there and make it well they're on the same shape. theme often they're, they're, they can be opposite or really weird but these are very squarely kind of about each other a little bit oh good interesting so here oh that was a sabian okay there we go thank you very much sue Melissa, that is the individual who will be joining us after the half break. She was born March 24th today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Nate has a, yeah, there it is. Happy birthday. Yay. I love it. And that was 1949. And she was born in Fernandina Beach, which I think is Florida. So. There's quite a bit here, and I spoke with Melissa and learned that she is an astrologer. So from her aspect, we can talk astrology, although maybe the rest of our audience may not be as versed. But there's some really pertinent things here to look at. The red circles is a T-square. Jupiter here, just like Ceres in our other chart, is squaring it. So the philosopher, the expansion, and it's in Capricorn. The same degree, interestingly, as the United States, Pluto. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, you know, she, and that's in the 12th house. And that's where she would like to concentrate on how to make that bigger, how to enjoy that, how to access it. But meanwhile, her moon is also there. And the moon is opposite Pluto. So it's from 12th to 6th, 7th house here and uh, it's right her Pluto is right on the descendant hmm. her Pluto is also conjunct how may we were just talking about that mm -hmm. it's a really That's interesting a signature, a signature one for yeah. people so in other words because I took the class with Haumea with hmm. Alan Clay and he said that many Plutos he's a Scorpio so he's saying are perhaps more concerned with the the life and death process of Pluto, which can be very literate. And then again, it can be just a cycle of rebirth, you know, of, 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 but of endings and beginnings is what I'm trying to say. But when you have Haumea there, those individuals are more involved with, okay, so things have totally mm -hmm. fallen apart, but what now? Finally, they get, how, how can we have a rebirth? You know, that's mm -hmm. the focus that the endings are, starting a new beginning it doesn't make it so easy but it at least focuses there where that's important and of course her series you know series and pluto pluto is the one that took the daughter and they're right there on the descendant so there's she that was whole a midwife. right there yeah she yeah. was a midwife for a long long time hmm. and i'm so another feature is she has a yacht she has some in conjuncts, but there's one really good yod because they don't all exactly line up. But to her... Um, is it Neptune and Pluto to Mercury? No, it's... Mer yes, yes, sir. Yeah, it is. So those two, Neptune, the great visions and the transformation with all of that. And she does have um, psychic abilities. 
know, um, she does past regressions. Mm. So she does access that Neptune in the eighth house. But with Mercury, I, I and it's in Pisces, you know, so I, uh, that's a adjustment. She's got the, this interesting combination of that Sun, Mars, and Aries with a North Node in Aries. Mm -hmm. So like that really um, forward moving kind of individualistic energies. And then the, the Mercury and the Venus are in Pisces, which are just so kind and gentle. And it's like, how do you how do you work with both of those? I mean, this is a this is a strong relationship chart because she's got the North Node in, in Aries, South Node in Libra, and so that whole axis is activated for her. And she's got Pluto right there on the Descendant, so she's she's come to experience really powerful relationships in this lifetime. And with Saturn in the seventh house, there's a call to to work at it, to do the work that, that's required of a relationship. There's, there's ever a bright way to read Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, if, but if you're going to accomplish things, it's good yeah. to know how the structure is. And, sure. you know, so she is. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mastery. So she's, she's here to like master the art of relationships and how to, and just like we talked about with that eclipse chart, like how do you balance that out? Like you're, what you want like she's got that strong Mars, Mars Sun connection with with the other, which plays into that the Mercury and the the Venus, which just wants to help the world and mm -hmm. and sometimes can give too much to others. I think can... boundaries really does going back to mm. that. Um, and interestingly, we'll see that right now there's opposition to that Saturn, so that's giving some sense of awareness in the next and yeah. The, up at the top with Chiron and Shariko. Shariko is the wife to Chiron, and they're conjunct. It's the mm -hmm. signature of this particular time in um, of, 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 of the natal. And she was reminding me, because I've often tried to think about Shariko, that she was a midwife. She was a healer, but she was really the midwife. She um, Chiron did the, the healing on the external with all the the herbs and the medicines, but Shariko was the internal and helped guide, you know, with transitions and, and all of that. Kerkla is also um, uh, represents a sacred space for healing. Mm -hmm. So ah. like Chiron would be doing the healing and Kerkla would set up the environment for that. Mm. And that's interesting to me because there's Jupiter and the moon in that 12th house trying to create that sacred space. So we have yes. two marks of having to, trying to find a space where you can be centered and you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And there, yeah. And there's, there's so much power in this. There's a grand trine, you know, going from that Shoriko and up there in Chiron, that healing factor we've talked about down to the nurturing and, and the grief. In other words, being able to help people and herself ultimately rise from this grief to find nurturing you know, it's it's really beautiful. And then it conjuncts down to that Aries and Pisces that you were talking about. It's a bit wide. I think it does. Anyway, let's go to the next chart. Actually, that's okay. Because we're supposed to break. Darn. Here we have. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, this is the big enchilada of the. Of the... There's a lot going chart. on in that chart. <laughs> there is, and I think before we break, I'll just briefly say that that moon of the eclipse, because this is on the outside, is so powerful. Look at that. It trines per moon. So it's a, that bucket moon mm -hmm. is really supporting that moon that's tucked away in the 12th house with all that awareness and objectivity, but maybe needing to get really centered on Closer to how she feels. On the, ocean, on the emotional needs right now. Yeah. It's a good, maybe a good way to move forward. And the other factor is you look at with the arrow with, um, oh, yeah, there's a yod here. Her natal yod is going right over to that transiting Venus. 
Venus that rules that moon. So I guess we'll have to break away and come back and look at it a little bit more and talk to her because I think when we talk to Melissa, we can talk more about this chart. But we'll see what you say when we come back. Okay, stay with us. We're returning. (laughs) And thank you, Amanda Pierce, John Chinworth, and myself. Talk Cosmos on March 24th. While we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We're currently in the period of Aries. By leaving a cycle based upon completion, the energy of Aries sparks initiation, creating action to separate into a new cycle of life. It's a fire sign, which means it will involve great emotion. And because separation may create resistance, it also takes great courage to break away to new ways of becoming. This is Martha Norwalk, every Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m., thanks in part to Natasha Venter at intuitiveclarifications.com, we cover the world of animals. This week, March 31st, it's an encore presentation. Join us to hear our last healing show with Dr. Nels and Linda Rasmussen. Together, they helped callers and their animal friends with emotional, behavioral, and physical issues, and you can receive a surrogate healing just by listening and following along with Linda's instructions. Martha Norwalk's Animal World, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to noon, right here on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Talk Cosmos brings insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for the soul growth with hour-long programs every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific on KKNW. Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel and Facebook page. While you're there, make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons so you get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers and to find out about upcoming programs sign up for the newsletter at talkcosmos.com so grab your coffee tea or kombucha and enjoy the show get your daily dose of variety alternative talk 1150 hello and we're back again i think i was just looking at my printouts And before we bring Melissa on, I just wanted to bring attention to both of the nodes because of the transit eclipse nodes and her nodes. They're both being accessed. And so just noticing up at the top of the chart with the south nodes that the her personal south node, which is 25 Libra, is being Mercury with this chart is down there at the bottom, you know, of that orange line. So in other words, it's, that's where she's emphasized. He has to think about things that are going ahead in new directions, I would think. And then with the other one, with the nodes that are transiting the South node, that one is conjunct her Neptune. There might, if, if you have thoughts about what, that could indicate, like, perhaps maybe boundaries. That's it. Like, it could be so psychic, but somehow still, because self self worth, um, it's all in Libra, you know, realizing that value. Because where does it go down? It goes down to the second house, and of course, fifteen degrees. Well, it's close to the Chiron. You know, it's three degrees from healing Chiron, whereas the Mercury is only two degrees from her north node. So it's like, yeah, somehow letting go of boundaries, or, or forming boundaries. Well, and it may be, a, yeah, and it, it, and it may be that this is bringing things forward for her to gain clarity on where there is a lack of boundaries is that that Neptune conjunct the 
her natal Venus is that Venus is already in Pisces and, and may lack some boundaries. And so adding Neptune to the mix is, is going to amplify that um, if that's an issue. Yeah. And then, Oh, sorry, go ahead. And then just that double, double um, energy with the, the transiting South node or uh, the eclipse South node conjunct her natal Neptune. It's like, how do we, we let go of these, these tendencies too. Because um, Neptune is also conjunct transiting Neptune is conjunct her natal uh, Venus. Yeah. So yeah, it, Neptune's a very powerful, you know, and it's a wonderful imaginative, it can be very spiritual. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so that may be happening for her as well. This, um, there may be a deepening of her, of her spirituality or her psychic abilities. You know, it, it can, it can be both um, one, one or the other or both or, or more. I think sometimes it is a matter of me versus the other person. And it's not necessarily the, maybe it's the people in the growing up. You know what I'm saying? It's like me or just somewhere, somewhere in that. John, did you have something that you wanted to add before we bring um, my, on? my eyes are stuck on uh, transiting Neptune with, um, I guess that's Hygieia, one of my favorite asteroids. Yay. Yeah, health. <laughs> me, Very right. much. Yeah, health spirit, spiritual health happening right there. So we're getting, we wanted to, to face all these things, and make those boundaries and create those new systems or what, whatever that is. So we can find it, attain some kind of spiritual balance. And there's a, there's a need, there's a rush to get that done as I guess Neptune approaches. Let's say Neptune's approaching. Um, All the personal planets. Yes, the personal planets are really getting affected because here mm -hmm. you can also see that Venus that's transiting is conjunct her natal Mercury, which again, when uh, is in that yacht. So the value system and that sense of of connecting to our thoughts is along with that help of Saturn. And last but not least, if we, how was it? No, I guess I'll stop there because, okay. Well, should we bring on Melissa, her the birthday girl? <laughs> hi, Nate. You can bring on our, our uh, hi, there you Hello. are. You did Hello. join us. Great to see you. How yes, wonderful. Great to see you too. <laughs> yeah. So we would love to hear any feedback that you have. And Well, one interesting thing that stuck in my brain is that my progressed moon uh, is moving into zero Scorpio. Mm. And that will be oh, wow. conjuncting how my Palmea. So add that into the reverse scenario. We've got so many going on. But uh, yeah, because and then the eclipse in October, this last eclipse, uh, yeah, it was conjunct my nodes and <clears throat> my progressed moon was sitting on those nodes. Exactly. So in the previous thing. And now my moon in on the... 9th of April, my moon becomes zero Scorpio. Okay. My progressed moon. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, that'll be two and a half years that you'll have, right, that. Which is beautiful because for rebirth with Pluto right there too, it went, and okay, the outer planets are definitely moving you into a good arena for rebirth and transformation. Sedna also, the very furthest planet of soul's destiny is in May going into Gemini. So that'll be, well, anyway, we won't confuse I'm, that. Yeah. And, and Melissa, I'm curious to, to know how you experienced that progressed moon that moved through Libra since Libra is such a, it's a big part of your chart and it's a big part of this eclipse. I'm curious how that, how that was for you or has been. Uh... Well, at the reverse node, which was in 2014, where where the nodes were reversed to what they are now, I met my current companion. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's just been okay fine <laughs> I, I do really well being alone um actually i was married for a long time i had six children with the same guy which is unusual for like age group and um that relationship the my ex-husband's on his last leg and his moon is in Libra and Pluto's on. So anyway, I'm looking at that as an ending, a really strong ending mm. for my whole family. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I just accept this is a mellow relationship. It's not a whatever. It's not exciting by any means, but it's, it's good know, to have. It's a good yes. companionship. He's That's 80. Right. He's, he's aging very quickly. And I'm, on the contrary, very much not, yeah. you know, I'm Looking not ready ahead. for that rocking chair. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's <laughs> talk about that. Let's talk about that. Because I think what Amanda yeah. meant more was just relationships in general about, you know, with that nodal. But oh, I did some have some problems with my children. Because, yeah, I had to leave and, and hide out for many years. And, and I went to the Amazon. But um, my relationships with my children are, are really nice. Almost all of them. And I have 14 grandchildren. And they've been calling all day. And so, yeah. So in terms of my family, it seems like that's just becoming more and more peaceful. It's not something I uh, dwell or, or or any guilt or anything like that because you can't transform. At least that's my understanding. You really can't go forward if you've got guilt or all of those mm -hmm. other things. True. I'll, Are you familiar yeah. with perfections? Yes. And I'm going this year. It's going into my fourth house. Exactly. Starting today. This is very interesting. Oh, you're, right. like, you're fine being alone. So being at home is going to be fine. Being you know? at home is fantastic. And, you know, I lived alone when I was in the Amazon. I lived alone and the villagers would get upset. But um, nonetheless, I just that's what I was doing. And during the pandemic pluto's been parked on my jupiter and it was really beautiful i mean i don't i know a lot of people have trouble with pluto and this and that but for me it was the most liberating pandemic i guess you could you could say i've been advanced almost i hardly recognize myself some days and that was T squaring my node. So I'm wondering just, is this going to wrap up that maybe that transformation that I went through with Pluto sitting on my Jupiter? I've just started um, putting myself out there again or doing regression work and hypnosis work and online. And so how long, how long have you been back? Melissa from I came back in 2004. Okay. But I'm I'm you know just since the pandemic I've become active with other people and made friendships, so many friendships. And I I have this is Chiron in my life, but I had a, a Tibetan master for 40 years who passed in 2019. And uh, but we're part of a global community. So like this morning, I was doing practice with people, I've, some of whom Russians, Ukrainians, French person mm -hmm. all over the world. We still yeah. practice almost every single day together. And that flourished because I'm not by myself because I'm at home in the 12th house with a Zoom Yes, yeah. it does make a big difference in that it's just, it's, it's moon been, loves to network. Yeah, the new moon in Aquarius, you know, loves yeah. to network. I'm gonna I show do. The, I'm going to show the next. This is your solar return. The only difference with this chart and 
tomorrow's chart because the solar returns the day before. There, everything it is only the moon at 14 degrees. And reading this, we would read it like a chart, and then we could superimpose it on top of um, a bywheel on your chart. But what I'm going to show here is I have your natal chart interior. In the middle one is the directed solar arc, not the progress, but the solar arc. And for those people that don't know that difference, it's a matter of measurement because the whole chart turns one degree a year, meaning that it goes through a sign or it takes 30 years. So if, but, every, but the relationships stay the same. So whatever is conjunct or square or aspected, will have that, but new signs. And it's a timing device, which is sometimes very interesting. It shows that right now is the time for something which is gonna pass. It's now's the time by Charlie Parker. And then on the outside, well, whereas, I'm interrupting myself, whereas the progress chart for those folks is when you take a day at a year. So your entire chart can change your inner planets. It's mostly for the inner planets particularly the moon, like you're saying, Melissa, and I'm speaking to the audience here, where uh, it takes two and a half years for the moon to go through rather than in a solar arc because it's a degree, it's longer. But it's it, but progressed are very powerful. It's a more emotional basis, whereas this is more of a timing, like a scenario. So on the outside is your solar return from yesterday. So I am going to, I wish I could get rid of that little thing down. I, you can't see it. But interestingly, healing is really so strong. It's where, and I mentioned the moon. I didn't bring that up. But here, if you have the 14 degrees there on the transit moon, that is directly across from your birthday to, no, wait a minute, it's, no, that's a solar, yeah, that's your birthday, onto Venus. So I'm just saying that for your birthday, for the whole year, no, well, maybe nine months, it's that particularly now, it has been for maybe three months, and it will be exactly for six, I'd say at least nine, that uh that this okay because it's also centering on your mercury that's my point is that this opposition thank you between the moon and venus is really uh synthesized with your thinking your mercury so i think and then when you look at the other healing prospects with Chiron in that birthday uh, chart, there's your solar return chart. And, and solar return is when your sun is exactly at the same degree, not necessarily yeah. your birthday because we have leap years. And it is conjunct at this point, your solar arc moon. And of course the moon travel, it's going to stay at 18 degrees for a year. It doesn't go to 19 until next year. It stays and it's been in Aries for 18 years and it will be for the next 12. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, it's, oh, but it's then like there's a degree a you're talking about. Oh, pardon me. Yes. It's the degree. Oh, it's 18. And that. so, yeah. And so it might be, actually, it is 57 minutes. So it will be maybe entering 19 degrees in the next short while. Because every five degrees, and we're getting nerdy here. I'm getting nerdy. But every five degrees is one month. Because five times 12 is 60 and there's 60 minutes. But at any rate, but there's that big emphasis on, on and collaborating all the moon, Venus, Mercury, I mean, it's just naturally happening. Because you were talking about wanting to access your natal 
Jupiter, did you have thoughts you wanted to share here with us about? Am I making sense? I hope I'm not going too fast. I'm going back to this. Well, I just part. wonder, you know, my tendency is to just go into the 12th house and stay there. Mm. And. <laughs> <laughs> nice peaceful place well with pluto there why not well, pluto and with yeah and no. with nato pluto opposing it you know it hasn't been a peaceful part of my life at all it's been difficult. well the, the 12th house really to understand it more than you know we it it is the collective unconscious and it is also, yes, with uh, the aged sometimes. I know you were thinking about having a group talking to people of older. Um, older lives. astrologers. Yeah, right. Older astrologers. People over 70. Let's have a talk group. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's serving it beautifully. It's. Yeah, there's a wisdom there because you have wherever Jupiter is a natural wisdom. You have, and it's in um, it's in Capricorn, which has that like. Um, I mean, sometimes we think of Capricorn as being like ambitious and climbing the ladder, but it's really also in a different way. It's kind of like that grandmother knowledge, and so being able to kind of disseminate this knowledge to others is to me, looks like a big part of your, your Jupiter journey here. And when we look at the, when we look at a, a planet that is square, the nodes, we want to look to the resolution node. And in this case, that's the South node. And so it's in Libra and it's, so this may be somewhere where you partner with other people to kind of, bring together, um, bring out some of your knowledge that you have. And I also think like, I really like that the, your solar arc moon is in Aries. It's, um, it's, 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 is a good energy to like start new things with. Like you'll have this feeling of just like wanting to kind of start it so that to kind of get you out of that, that 12th house, energy a little bit, but you know, you can do that online and still stay in the comfort of your home and kind of balance that all out, which is also a nice way to use that, that Libra energy as well. Yeah. And yeah, Mars I, sitting, go ahead, go ahead. I think my theme is I'm afraid to be seen. Hmm. So uh that would be you know but it seems i really like what you just said um that was very helpful and yeah i had a store of information up there that's for sure absolutely yeah, and I take bet. it this way when we talked yesterday you weren't going to show yourself but you took that step you're showing yourself right now <laughs> and that's part of that that chiron conjuncture solar arc moon you know this is healing on that mm -hmm. that that aries level um because aries is very visible it's, it's it's out leading the pack and so there's a lot of visibility and also a lot of um like aries is that energy of of um violence and so you know it's the it's like when you're the pack leader you might get you might get hit by somebody else. And so there's, we have these, these past life, you know, resonances mm -hmm. to that, that we're working to clear and that working through that Chiron energy may be a big part of that for you. Yeah. You know, I, I will say that that um, little steps, oh boy, I was trying to grab all of this because the, um, Fear is partly Capricorn. I mean, you need, you have that, and it just takes a step, a step in one direction. And also following your heart, which the Venus is really working on 
supporting with you and and knowing that you have people that you can talk to it, it's a I'm not exactly expressing what I'd hope to express all all of that went away I'm sorry but I think um, yeah uh, blessings to you I know you can just voice vocalizing this Melissa I think you've got plenty of uh, you'll be adored <laughs> Thank you for joining an insightful conversation on Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests awaken consciousness by connecting soul growth patterns with astrology's energetic cycles. Be sure to tune in next Sunday, 1 p.m. Pacific time to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway.